Good evening. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is 10:20 uh, p.m. California time, July 28th, 2025. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows that 2.2 coming in there to uh, Southern California. It looks like maybe just south of the. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's south of the border there. A little earthquake uh, in that region. Uh, also had some larger movement uh, earlier this afternoon. The seven pointer got dropped down by one point to a 6.9. Technically, we've had two decent earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. A 6.5 into Indonesia here, and then a more stronger quake down south here. But this earthquake swarm is uh, really interesting here. It's uh, got four aftershocks here of five range, and this is just not the only activity we've seen here. We've been looking at. Uh, a lot of movement happening down here across this area of the plate boundary recently. And this area is, um, I believe this is a small sub subduction zone down here. You can kind of see this trough area. As uh, far as largest magnitude specifically in this area, I'm thinking we can get a little bit bigger than a 7, uh, than a 6.9. I do want to double check here and run over to the earthquake uh, history book, so to speak from the USGS. Nice little feature on their website. We're just going to draw a little rectangle over that area of interest here. Which, look at New Zealand. I mean, this whole area is just super dynamic, getting pulled and stretched and subducted. Uh, but I do want to look at this little area down here. It does include little, this little section up here as well. So let's see what we got as far as history goes in terms of large movement. Well, yeah, today 6.9 there. It looks like it's the largest since 2000. Well, well two, we had a couple here. 2022, 6.9. It can get a little bit larger here. Looks like in the mid 7 range. Been a number of 7s out here. Uh, the largest magnitude appears to be a 7.7 .7 that struck out here in 1924. So it is a major region for some large earthquake activity. Uh, the concerning thing is here that uh, all the elevated activity down here across this plate boundary has to be spreading up north as far as the pressure uh, gradients go. I always try to show this map right here. Whenever we get earthquake activity along any boundary here, it kind of gives you a good indicator where that strain could potentially be leading to. And a lot of areas pointing up north here, but also down around this region here. We do have to watch up through New Zealand. That's been a uh, an area of interest here recently. As um, far as any newer quake activity, doesn't look like it. Maybe a uh, maybe a three pointer in there around South Island. And South Island, of course, is um, well. It's got the Alpine Fault here that runs on the west side of South Island. That uh, let me give you a little bit of information here. I got a little article here. I'm going to bring up from the Wikipedia Wikipedia website here, the Alpine Fault. Uh, it is a geological fault that runs almost the entire length here of New Zealand's South Island. 370 miles or 600, 600 kilometers there for the international viewers. Um, fairly old fault. Uh, most of the fault system there is a strike slip, meaning side to side. Uh, there is some areas that uh, have some uplift in the area, you know, about the center portion there. As uh, far as maybe a dipping type fault. The last major rupture here was back in 1717. Look at this accumulation slip rate. 38 mm per year. That's 1.5 inches a year. That's very fast in terms of slip accumulation. So if you do the math there on that, that many years, that's well over 300 years of 1.5 inches. That's a lot of offset there that's been building up. Now the magnitude there potentially can be up around 8.1. Uh, looks like the probability here, at least uh, according to some folks there, is, uh, there's a 75% chance of it happening, a big one, uh, before 2068. With all the movement happening around this area recently, we do have to watch that. It's starting to close in here around New Zealand. A lot of movement down south. Here's some older movement here throughout the month. Also a lot of activity, newer movement here in the north. You know, this that leaves this area just pretty much in the middle point boundary. We do have to watch that pretty closely because an eight pointer out there, you know, that uh, definitely do some damage. And not to mention a tsunami potentially there from that. Another earthquake coming in there to that region of the 6.9 today, a 4.6. 
here in the last hour. Uh, let's see what else we got here across California. California was starting to stir up this morning with two three-pointers out there back-to-back. -back. Uh, started off with a 3.0, and then roughly about uh, a minute later, maybe less than a minute later, later a 3.1. And it uh, looks like the earthquake activity came to a halt there with a 0.7. This is just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Got to watch this area as well, right? This has been over 300 years of built up strain, specifically on this little se uh, segment here, this little portion of the southern segment. But the southern segment entirely runs up north here a little bit, and that uh, is capable in its entirety of an 8.1. And even though we've had, you know, some earthquake activity in the center portion and uh, a portion of the southern branch, a lot of time has passed since those two ruptures. So, um, Pretty much uh, any day now, a lot of areas are going to, you know, probably see some larger movement here soon. And it's not the end of the world. Let me tell you, earthquakes happen every single year, uh, all, you know, all the time. Uh, no elevated activity following that three-pointer is noted there, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye there in Southern California. Uh, some movement off the Calaveras Fault here this morning and this afternoon, it looks like. The uh, latest one shows a 2.0. That uh, is... Again, looks like it's right around the Calaveras Fault Zone. Interesting earthquake here in between the uh, San Francisco area, which is the San Andreas Fault, and the Hayward Fault. 2.0 underneath the bay. That's definitely some weird activity. Nothing new to report there in that region, but uh, it's an odd quake. Uh, Northern California, a handful of earthquakes out here. Uh, some twos. Let's see what we got here for the Cascadia Trimmer Map. Trimmer Map. 87 epicenters underneath the Olympia, Washington area. Nothing down south. Uh, as far as any elevated activity goes here across Washington, nothing for now. Um, the last recorded earthquake up here looks to be a zero at uh, early this morning. But let me show you guys why I find this hard to believe because it's not, that is not truthful there. We can go over here, we actually need to go to the trimmer map and check out the um, volcano seismicity on Mount Rainier. And even though they're not showing anything over here, you gotta go to these seismograph stations here and we'll take a look. That's an adjustment, that's not an earthquake, but there's one earthquake right here in the last couple hours. But according to the PNSN and the USGS, the last earthquake was a zero early, early this morning. But uh, I, I beg to differ. There's been quite a few earthquakes here. If we go back to the last UTC time, there's been a number of earthquakes out here. That earthquake in itself there, that does look like a localized event. Um, that is not going to be the larger event across the globe there. This is a local event here. Let me see. See, nothing showing up there. And that was roughly at about noon today even though this is a previous utc time this is still around noon today on monday july 28th that in itself there looks like it could be up in the two range let's see if that's a legit earthquake though right and how you can check as you go over here back to the map and just check out this seismograph station over on the opposite side there of mount rainier we'll see what we got um a little bit of noise out there i'm still not for sure what that stuff is um, so where'd that earthquake go around noon? Unless it's a very localized event, it looks like it disappeared out here. It's hard to say. There's definitely an event right there from, um, uh, yesterday, a couple other smaller events in, as well, but some of these seismograph stations there pick up earthquakes that are not being picked up over here and vice versa. But to me, that, uh, like I say, that definitely looks like some type of event there around 12.30 or so. There's only an EHZ station, so we can't check anything else. But uh, anyway, there's still earthquake activity happening. Um, the counts are going down because they're not getting reported here. There's a number of earthquakes there that are showing up. So we'll continue to watch it and check back on it. I haven't seen any uh, GPS issues, you know, as far as anything uprising out here. We will double check it here. This is a pretty neat little layout of 
many, many different GPS stations out here. So let's see what we got. There's a couple out here. Here's one on the west side. This is an older one that's offline. So technically the only thing that we, let's see if this one, this one's fairly current. Overall trend is going down though. 2025, right about here. It's got some seasonal uplift, right? That snow melt and whatnot, it absorbs into the uh, ground kind of acts as a sponge so there'll be a little bit of inflation but the overall trend here this is a vertical displacement shows that it's going down on that one I wish there was I really wish there was a little bit more localized GPS stations up here at the summit uh, this one here is offline since 2000 uh, 2015 or so uh, and that's you know that's uh, unfortunate this one's current, but it's kind of at the base on the northern end. No change on that, though. Just some seasonal uh, uplift there going on, but it uh, overall trend on this looks fairly steady. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. We'll just move on past that. We'll keep an eye on it for sure, though. Uh, trail of earthquakes from Yellowstone down through Utah. I wish the Yellowstone stations were working normally, but uh, some of them are. I guess we... I mean... To check this out, I guess we'd have to go over here to the Volcano USGS site there for Yellowstone because the University of Utah there, their seismograph stations are just completely squashed. But you think it'd be, you think it would be the same, right? As far as the data coming in, as far as the monitoring goes and the equipment. But uh, let's see what we got here. This is Yellowstone National Park. We'll check the center caldera here last 24 hours. I guess this one looks a little bit better in terms of the amplitude counts out here. I'll have to start using this. Someone mentioned it in one of the comments here. Um, no, actually it was an email there from a regular viewer that mentioned if I'm just looking at the University of Utah ones or the USGS ones. The USGS ones look a little bit better, uh, not so squashed. So that uh, there was a little earthquake here, it looks like about 10.30 this morning local time which is, uh, let's see which earthquake that was, 10.30 or so? 1.5, I'm guessing, yeah, up there. So that did pick that up. I'm just gonna have to bookmark this and uh, check these seismograph stations for now. A little bit of noise out there as well. Uh, but I don't see any major swarms, no unusual activity there across Yellowstone for now. And we've checked out GPS stations there in the past, so not a whole lot of change. But uh, a little bit of earthquake activity stretching up there, it looks like, stress out there against these mountain ranges here. Oil fields still getting hit, uh, nothing new out there in Texas. Watch out for some five pointers. Uh, I think it's coming up here, maybe. Seems like they happen every couple months or so and it's been uh, longer than that. Yes, they do get some five pointers out there in the oil fields. Uh, a couple earthquakes out in the New Madrid seismic zone, nothing new going on out there though. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the earthquake 3D globe, see if anything's uh, active up in the north. Japan, some older activity kind of quieted down here right now you know a lot of newer movements well larger activity back over here and down south i'm waiting on something to kick up here potentially across this area of the plate boundary i mean japan has been very active as well the curl camp chatco it just almost seems like it's leading up to an eight pointer out here somewhere maybe something bigger should be uh seeing that uh, come up pretty soon and I say that, let me show you guys real quick, okay, on the graph here. And we're going to look at so far this year in terms of earthquake activity and what we've seen. Uh, on average, this is what we should see each year. It's an average basic graph of how many earthquakes happen on average. Some years there's more, some years there's less, right? Okay, so on average, we should see 15 7.0 to 7.9. And uh, I thought that earthquake here today it was going to be our other seven pointer but it's not so we've seen seven 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 pointers so far right that would have made eighth if i had it been a seven pointer but they dropped it down so seven of those where does that put us that puts us roughly at about um i guess halfway maybe a little bit below average maybe at the middle point there for six pointers, uh, so far, you know, let's see what we've got. Should see 130 of them. Uh, 75 minus seven up there, 68. So 68 earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 to 6.9. 
That's a decent number, right? 68? Uh, that would probably be... We could probably be around average or slightly higher uh, for the six-pointers. But nothing of out of the ordinary, nothing extreme. It's not like we're seeing 107 pointers and oh my gosh, what's going on here? This is just average. This is stuff that happens here. And it, this world that we're living in right now with a lot of disinformation, we have to be very cautious of because anyone and everyone has their eyes reading it. But you got to make sure you go to the factual information out here. That's what this channel is all about providing facts, relevant information, science, and data. And that's what we have here. But we are, you know, you got to look at the data here. And to ignore this, since our last one was back in 2021, that's four years ago, to ignore it, you know, we can't do that. Can't turn a blind eye to it because eventually here we're going to see about it. We're going to hear about an eight pointer. And it could happen at any given location here on Earth. There's a couple I got in mind. But also, the longer this goes on here without seeing an eight pointer, I think the likelihood of a nine pointer could go up. Uh, nine pointers are the great quakes, right? Our last one was back in 2011, the Japan earthquake. It's been a little bit of time, um, but we got to watch that. It's coming up. A bigger quake is somewhere out here. I know California has been, look at that, pretty absent of any larger movement, but uh, hey, I guess we'll see what happens out here. Little sea flare coming in right now. C1.9. Let's see where that's coming from. Let's see where that's coming from. Maybe this area looks like a little magnetic loop. Uh, there is a couple of different sunspots out there, kind of bright on the UV image of the sun. Let's see what we got. The one that's kind of flaring looks like it may be coming off of this area. There's still a little bit of complexity here. Not much. Um. This one looks a little bit more complex, but then again, since this morning, it looks like it's gone down a little bit. A couple other areas out on the far eastern limb. Now, there is a fairly massive area here on the far side. Let me show you guys real quick. This is from the 28th today. I'm talking about this region. That is super large in terms of coverage. Now, whether it's super dynamic or not, uh, well, we don't know. We'd have to wait until this gets further out across the eastern limb here. This is going to be the eastern limb sunspots coming into view, the earth-facing side, and then they depart over here across the western limb. We'll see what happens here in the uh, coming days, once or in about a week or so, when that becomes uh, viewable. Uh, no major roars in the forecast, folks. No major coronal holes. A little tiny one up north there in the northern uh, area of the sun, but uh, that's about it. That is about it. Um, Storm Prediction Center. Well, still got that moderate risk out here for tonight. Looks like some uh, tornado potential. Big time wind threat and a little bit of hail as well in that uh, thunderstorm mix, which I wish we had just a little bit of here in Northern California because it's just been, it just hasn't been good out here. I mean, it hasn't been an extraordinarily hot summer, but uh, it's too hot for me. A little bit of noise out there across the uh, Montana area. A whole bunch of noise down here across Iowa. Look at that around Mason City. Yeah, good luck sleeping with all of these lightning strikes out there happening almost consistently. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy amount of earthquake activity. All right, folks. So just remember, keep an eye here on New Zealand. whole bunch of movement down south here. I don't know if we're going to see anything large or not. We'll have to watch this aftershock sequence there because uh, they can get a little bit bigger. Um, in the uh, mid to upper seven range across that area south of New Zealand here, but watch for pressurization up north here. And that includes New Zealand area. It's on that plate boundary. Eventually it has to move. 1717 was the last rupture there on the Alpine Fault. So that's a lot of built up strain there at 30, uh, about 35 or 33 mm per year. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Tuesday morning update. We'll do it all over again, uh, see what happens here overnight. Have a good one. Take care.